If you're gearing up for a cybersecurity exam, whether it's hands-on and practical or multiple choice, then you've come to the right place. In today's video, we'll cover essential tips and strategies to help you crush both types of exams. So we'll talk about practical preparation, getting to grips with multiple choice questions, creating a solid study plan, and some general advice to keep you on track. Do you worry about privileged access sprawl in your organization? Uncontrolled privileged accounts are a prime target for attackers. A single compromised account can grant access to your entire network. And that's why at TCM, we trust Keeper. Keeper's zero trust privileged access management brings together password, passkey, secrets, and connections management into one single control plane for effortless security and usability. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper PAM is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless, and has no implementation fees. So if you're looking for a new solution to secure every user, every device, then check out keeper.io forward slash TCM to schedule a quick demo with their awesome team. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first things first, thoroughly read all of the provided documentation. This might seem basic, but it's crucial. And actually, when I was taking the PMPT, I did miss something important that cost me a few hours of work. The documentation often contains critical details about what to expect and how to set up your environment and also the rules of engagement. And for exams like OSCP, this is also really important as we have restrictions on the tools that we can use and in some cases, how many times we can use them. Don't skim make sure you fully understand the scope, rules, and requirements. It can also be helpful to read through some blog posts and the experiences of others so that things that caught them out don't also catch you out as well. Next, we have to think about and identify the core tools and techniques that you'll need for your practical exam. For example, there's no point in going into really complex web attacks during a network pen test exam like OSCP or PMPT, but you may need to be prepared for the fundamentals like like finding and troubleshooting a relevant CVE, basic injection, or things like insecure file upload. It's also really important to be brutally honest with yourself about what your strengths and weaknesses are. Most people struggle with things like Windows privilege escalation, and really there's only one way to get better at it, and that is to do more of it. The more you understand about Windows internals and the more practice that you put in, the better you're going to be. Just like everything in life, or maybe like life itself, it's just a numbers game. So in practical exams, there are often easier targets or vulnerabilities that we can use to score points. Prioritize these early on and get them out of the way as it boosts your confidence and gives you a cushion of points to work with. The buffer overflow was still a thing back when I did OSCP. And if I recall, I think I had it done in around 30 minutes, maybe even a little less as I'd prepared most of the scripts that I'd need beforehand. And that was definitely the easiest 25 points on the exam at the time. Next, most of our study time should be spent on learning and practicing. However, at least once or twice, as we get closer to our exam, it's a good idea to simulate the actual exam conditions, set up a time-limited scenario and work through it as if it were the real deal. I've done this with PMPT by practicing in raster labs on Hack the Box. And for OSCP, I took three proving ground boxes and gave myself a day or around 12 hours to complete as much as I could. And I usually recommend Proving Grounds over Hack the Box for OSC preparation, as I personally feel like the boxes are more relevant or similar to the offset style that you'll get in the actual exam. Hack the Box boxes are a little bit different. Now, if we do fail an exam, it's actually a good thing because exams are at least 5,000 times easier the second time round. Seriously, treat the first run as a practice run. And if you clear it, that's great. But if you don't, then you'll honestly be in a much better spot to clear it the second time because familiarity breeds confidence. I failed OSCP the first time around, but the second time I had a passing score within about four and a half hours. And I continued for a while, but then just decided to finish up, write the reports and submit it. So if you've attempted an exam once, you'll have a much better idea of what to expect and how to prepare. And you'll also be able to reflect on what you did well, what roadblocks you ran into, 
and where you need to improve. Use everything as a learning experience. So now we'll move on to talking about multiple choice exams. Regardless of how you feel about them, they exist and there are benefits to having them on your CV. In this situation, practice exams are your best friends. They give you a feel for the question format, the types of topics covered, and where you might have gaps in your knowledge. Once you've taken a practice exam or just a bunch of practice questions, make sure you review both the correct and incorrect answers to make sure you reinforce everything that you've learned. My second tip is to do more practice exams. Seriously, do as many as you can find. The more you practice, the more patterns you'll recognize and the more comfortable you'll be with this exam format. My third tip for passing multiple choice exams is that while official materials can be good, they're often bloated with a lot of meaningless chaff. So have a look around for highly rated third party resources or exam prep materials that can provide more concise explanations that will probably click better for you. And finally, when you're in the exam, avoid the temptation to second guess yourself. Studies have shown that the first instinct is often the correct answer and therefore you shouldn't change your answers. Only change an answer if you're really, really, really certain that you made a mistake and even then maybe just leave it as it is anyway. Now let's talk about creating a study plan. I don't know about everybody else, but I tend to commit to a lot of hours and then after day two, I basically stop what I'm doing for an entire month. So it's important to be realistic with ourselves here and first define what we want to achieve both in the short term and the long term. So I've found that instead of saying I'm going to study for three hours a day, I set an achievable goal like I'm going to do a chapter or a module a week and then try to have a fixed time where I actively work towards this goal and I found that this is much better for me. Having clear short-term goals really helps keep you focused. Next, we should always look to identify topics that we are weak in or ones that we know that we're going to be tested on. It's really easy to fall into the habit of each time you sit down to study to start from scratch and essentially review things that you already know, but Honestly, this is a complete waste of time. Work on things that are either new or things that you struggle with. Next, I want to say that it's okay not to know everything for your exam. Focus on getting a solid understanding of the core topics and then branching out is a better way to approach them. It's impractical to memorize a whole book and frankly, a waste of your time efforts and life in general. And finally, before we finish up with the video, I wanted to share some generic tips and advice. I'm just going to list these ones off as some of them we've already talked about and others are just good advice in general. And if you have questions, then feel free to swing by our live stream and we can always discuss it in more detail. So first up, we have consistent practice. Next, we have taking care of your health, using multiple resources, simulating exam conditions, focus on weak areas, stay updated, relax and take breaks, review and reflect, stay positive and confident, and book your exam sooner rather than later. All of these things are going to really help you stay on track and some of the things like taking care of your health should be a real priority for you. And that's it for today's video. So preparing for exams can be pretty daunting, but with the right strategies and mindset, you can definitely succeed. If you've got any other tips or experiences that you want to share, then drop them down in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe subscribe and I will catch you next time.